The state of Colorado faced a record budget gap this year, but because of improved revenue and spending cuts, the state budget is balanced this year, and the projected gap for next year has been reduced. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly, and I'm joined by Colorado State Representative Mark Ferrandino. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, this is not something that we hear of often, a budget that is balanced. First of all, how did that happen? And I know we're not out of the woods yet, but first of all, the beginning. How are we balanced? Sure. We, when we came into our legislative session, we faced a billion dollar shortfall. That's out of seven billion dollars. Uh, so a big percentage of our budget. Um, but through negotiations, through cuts, significant cuts, unfortunately, uh, the biggest one being $220 million to K-12 education. Uh, that has huge impacts on our schools across the state. Uh, we had thought it was going to be actually over $300 million, but because of cuts we made other places like health care, uh, higher education, unfortunately, but then improved revenue. Uh, our financial picture is starting to look up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting to see more revenue come in, and that it was able to allow us to offset some of the cuts that we otherwise would have had to make. I know that you made some huge changes, too. A prison was closed, for example. Yeah, we, uh, for the first time, we closed a 400-bed prison. We had closed some uh, earlier in the year. We had closed some smaller prisons. But we, um, in one of our rural counties, closed a prison that uh, housed about 400 offenders, and they'll be moved to other places around the state. But that has a huge economic impact on that community who's going to be impacted uh, with their jobs. It's about three to 400 jobs in that community alone in Bend County. Absolutely. And, and as I mentioned, we're not out of the woods yet. So what are we looking like down the years in terms of future cuts? Yeah, we'll see a little better picture as we continue to go forward, but we have a structural deficit. The revenue that we're bringing in isn't paying for the expenses that we have, and we're going to have to change the situation. And one thing that we're looking at, especially when you look at Colorado, we have a lot of constitutional provisions that say where we have to put our money. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of earmarks in terms of constitutional uh, attached uh, strings of where things should be. So uh, all higher education is where we see a lot of cuts. And unfortunately, we've seen over a 20% reduction in higher education funding. Uh, we, in the next three to five years, could be the first state to uh, eliminate higher education funding for the state, which just means higher tuition um, for uh, kids throughout the state. We're actually seeing this year uh, somewhere in the order of 10 to 20, 25, and even some schools raising their tuitions to cover the cuts we had to make uh, to K-12. And that makes a huge, huge impact down the line in terms of students having to pay back their loans when they graduate. And, you know, I think that people generally want to know, OK, if we're talking about, um, you know, closing the budget in the future, personally, on a day to day, you mentioned higher education. Where else would the average citizen in Colorado be affected and, and feel it in terms of trying to close that budget gap down the line? Uh, parents who have kids in schools will feel it the most directly. Um, we are seeing school districts across the state moving from five-day school weeks to four-day school weeks. And those families are going to have to figure out how do you deal with the kid not being in school when you have to work that, uh, that Friday and you can't take off. What are you going to do? How is that going to be more expense for daycare uh, and or uh, finding other alternatives for something for those kids to do? Uh, so that's a huge impact. We're looking at a lot of low-income uh, families who will have to pay more for their health care, um, and that will uh, probably see less uh, doctors who will see Medicaid and CHIP patients because we'll cut provider rates for them, um, so longer lines to get health care. So significant problems, uh, especially for people all across Colorado who are trying to use public services that they've relied on for so many years. All right, so they have a lot to try to look forward to in terms of dealing with the impact of this. We have about 20 seconds left. I know that uh, it's balanced, and it was because of there were delayed negotiations, and I'm I'm wondering what all that was about and why it was a little delayed this year. Sure. For the first time in several years, uh, we've had split chambers, Republicans controlling the House and Democrats controlling the Senate. Um, and so it took a lot longer to negotiate uh, between the two parties to figure out what we could do. And eventually we came together uh, like we always do in Colorado and solve the problem. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us and giving us that update. People have a lot to look to in order to try to negotiate themselves how to work that out. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.